Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord our God, who didst raise up thy servant Hilary to be a champion of the Catholic faith, keep us steadfast in that true faith which was professed at our baptism, that we may rejoice in having thee for our Father, and may abide in thy Son, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, thou who livest and reignest forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first epistle of St. John. Children, it is at last the hour, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. From this we know that this is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us, for if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But by going out, they made it plain that none of them belongs to us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and all of you have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and you know that no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Everyone who confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he has promised us, eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for the Mass this afternoon is a portion of Psalm 119. We will recite together verses 97 through 104 of Psalm 119, which can be found in the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 771. Psalm 119, verses 97 through 104. Page 771. Oh, how I love your law. All the day long it is in my mind. Your commandment has made me wiser than my enemies, and it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my study. I am wiser than the elders, because I observe your commandments. I restrain my feet from every evil way, that I may keep your word. I do not shrink from your 
your judgments, because you yourself have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste. They are sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your commandments, I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every lying way. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch, and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire, and burned. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. When I was a child, one of the very best experiences of my entire life, and I'm not even sure whether or not this is possible anymore, but when I was a kid, if you would have asked me the top three, but perhaps even the top experience of my life, I would have told you that it was visiting the Museum of Science and Industry in the city of Chicago, not because of anything that was actually at the Museum of Science and Industry in an exhibit, but because as a part of the gift shop was the greatest thing I have ever seen. Now, think with me here. Perhaps you've seen something like this. Oh, I hope you have. It's magnificent. It was this massive funnel. Uh, perhaps about yay big. I don't know. I was a small child, so it could have been smaller, but it seemed quite large at the time. And it was this vast circle that was a funnel, and there was a chute that went in kind of a spiral that was attached to this massive bin up above it a couple of feet. And what you would do is you would beg your parents to pay five dollars or however much it was, probably not very much because it was the 90s and everything was wonderful, but you know, you pay uh, four dollars or five dollars or whatever it was, and then you got to pull this lever on the bin and into the funnel, down the chute, would pour this infinite, unimaginably large number of polished rocks, polished gems, right? And of course, they were all just kind of crystals and agates and things like that, probably not very valuable, but they were all polished rocks, and they were beautiful, every color you can imagine. I mean, just the colors of the rainbow, and I was convinced in my wisdom that all of them were priceless and that they were coming from some rock exhibit in the museum itself, and you would have about 30 seconds or whatever it was to grab as with only your hands. You couldn't use your sweatshirt or something else. You had to grab with your hands as many rocks as you could. And you could fill uh, a different size pouch, right? So depending on how many dollars you paid, you could get a little pouch or a medium-sized pouch. Or if it was your birthday, you could get a larger <laughs> pouch of rocks, right? And so then afterward, after you had this experience of gathering as many as you could, and there were so many, and it was, it was unimaginable to even think that wanted into this bag, but then all the rocks would go down in the funnel, somehow be brought back up in the chute, and you would have this remarkable collection of stones. It was exhilarating, beginning to end the experience, but then also getting to go home afterward and you're in the car, and your parents say, well, you can't take them out yet because they'll go all over the car. But you get home and you get to your room and you spread them out over your bedspread, and it's just this immeasurable treasure of wealth for a seven, eight, or nine-year-old. And I, to this day, like, if you would ask me, what is your, you know, when did you feel most alive as a human being? I would, you know, of course tell you uh, my first communion and my ordination to the priesthood, and then, like, just under that would be this funnel of rocks. Um, so why am I telling you this story? I am telling you this story because to this very day, this is how I think about studying theology. 
This is how I think about the knowledge of God. Because the study of theology, unfortunately, I think today, especially in theological education, we have this unfortunate tendency to separate practical spirituality from theological spirituality, right? So you think, okay, well, you're going to go to seminary, and maybe you'll be a priest, or maybe you'll be a minister of some other sort, or you're just a very uh, committed lay person who's deeply interested in the questions of the church, and you'll kind of be sifted, right? Or, or the, the faculty or the program, the curriculum itself, encourages this sort of separation where you think, well, if you're very intellectual, if you're an academic, you'll go study the questions of theology, and, you know, probably the people who are going to get PhDs are the ones who should go do that. And then everybody else should learn how to do very practical things like, you know, uh, have a baptism or learn the prayer book or learn how to pray or teach a class. Um, any number of very valuable things that you certainly do need to know as a minister of God. But this separation to me always seemed incredibly arbitrary. And I think I'm not the only one who thinks this, thank the Lord. But Truly, all of these things go together, whether you're in seminary or whether you're just interested in doing some more reading about the Christian faith. There really isn't a separation between what's practical and what's theological. Because I think anybody, upon just a decent amount of reflection, can tell you that teaching a Sunday school class to a group of little children is a deeply theological exercise. There are important questions of salvation in there is pedagogy involved. There is any number of deeply substantive and significant things that a person has to be exploring in order to do this very important work. And then, of course, to study academic theology isn't just dry and boring and abstract. You're not just sitting in a library doing something that's only an exercise for your mind. But doing and reading and writing theology is actually a deep and profound introduction to prayer. I wrote my honors thesis in seminary, and the entire time I found my heart just being expanded by the texts I was reading. I was studying Edith Stein, and I found her legacy in philosophy, not only teaching me how to think, but how to pray. And so all of these are bound together, and they are our inheritance as a church. Today, in our commemorative calendar, we, we remember uh, Bishop Hilary of Poitiers, St. Hilary of Poitiers, who was a 4th century writer and theologian, deeply important to the church, deeply important as a doctor of the church, someone whose intellect was unparalleled, whose writing was skilled, whose legacy in the church is something that impacts us even to this day. He was writing in a time of great heresy when it was still early in the church's establishment of doctrine, when all kinds of odd little things were popping up that were not aligned with what we know about Christ from Scripture including, especially, I've preached about this before, I'll spare you the whole lecture, but on Arianism, which was a philosophy that, to put it simply, denied the full divinity of Jesus. The Arians believed that Jesus was sort of this emanation of the living God, but not quite up to the same level as God. And this led to all kinds of quirky ways of understanding how the church should be established and how it should be led and how people should worship and all these other things that actually weren't in line with an orthodox Christian doctrine. And so people like Augustine were very famous for combating these heresies, but Hilary of Poitiers was one of the very first who set it out in a, a series of writings about why exactly this Arian heresy was incorrect. But the way he did it was deeply prayerful, deeply spiritual. He was a theologian first rate, but he was also a pastor and a husband and a father. Right? We're not used to thinking of bishops of the early church as being husbands and fathers, but he was. He was a family man, deeply committed to his life, and in fact his daughter ended up being recognized as a saint herself. And so here was a man who saw with clear eyes that prayer and theology could never be separated, but in fact they inform one another, enhance one another, and animate one another to bring us closer to the heart and mind of the living God. And so that's why today, I think of learning and theology as the giant bin full of the gems at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, Illinois. Not only because it was a remarkable, remarkable memory for me, but because I think truly this is our invitation when we dive into the treasures that the church has waiting for us. You might not think of yourself as a theologian, or you might not think of yourself as gifted in any academic study, but that doesn't matter. You're here. You're receiving the sacrament of the 
body and blood of Jesus at the altar. That is your invitation into the mind of Christ. And so whether you're teaching students who are five or six years old, or you're just picking up a Bible for the first time in a decade, or perhaps you're even studying something at the advanced level, and you're learning Greek, and you're digging into some of these questions of theological substance, wherever you are on that spectrum, the full breadth of the bin full of gems is waiting for you. And I invite you today to go home and spread them out on your bedspread. Behold their beauty and recognize that each and every one of them is for you. And each and every one of them will tell you something about the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially to Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Sean, Nora, Stephen, Gordon, and Nicholas, my brother and sister priests who worship and pray in this place, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Kamala, our vice president, the members of the Supreme Court and the Congress, and all state and local officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all of those people who have been entrusted to us in this place for our prayers, especially Chris, Sue, George, John, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Nick, Bryce, Howard, Will, Clayton, Liz, Barbara, Sam, Hannah, Rick, Anne, Jonathan, Roger, Oliver, Max, James, and Beau, and all of those people who have asked us to keep them in our own prayers, and all people throughout the world with no one to remember them and to pray for them. We pray for all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants to part this life in thy faith and fear, especially remembering Barbara, and praying for all those who died of COVID-19 in this past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them by acts of warfare, fear, violence, or oppression. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Mark the Evangelist, blessed Hilary of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, 
we do our receive your credit, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Walk in love as Christ loved us, and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which the earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed art thou, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father of the Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifices of our hands, to the praise and glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. For with thy co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit thou art one Lord, one God in trinity of persons and in unity of substance. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of thee, O Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, 
a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable holy and living sacrifice unto thee, most humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy for our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather at the farms under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost see us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us 
Teacher us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the physical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all the faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in thee. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. At this time, as we have been doing the last couple of weeks on Wednesdays and Fridays, I invite anyone who would like to, to come to the altar rail for prayers, prayers of healing and anointing with holy oil. Um, if you'd like to pray for healing or to receive prayers, please feel free to come and kneel at the altar rail or to remain in your chairs and pray as well. Or if you are um, ready to go back into God's good world, please feel free to do that as well. I know that you are most welcome. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve thy sick servants, and give thy power of healing to those who minister to their needs. That those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness, and have confidence in thy loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. Now together in humility and thanksgiving, we pray the words that our Savior Jesus has given us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all those who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.